One of my recent videos went over my opinion about the various tiers of Don't Starve Together players. The F tier consisted of players who literally just installed the game and are playing for the first time, while the cutoff for S tier was defeating 3 raid bosses before mid game. Wes is the weakest character in the game and in this video I'll go over what in my opinion is the easiest and most consistent way for Wes to clear the S tier requirements without cheesing. Before we start, this guide isn't as noob friendly as my how to be a good Wes video. So I'm going to assume that you already know the basics of Wes that I covered in that video. Anyways, as soon as you spawn in with Wes, you want to craft a speedy balloon. Unsurprisingly, you're going to want to rush tame an ornery beefalo. While Wes is the weakest character in the game, he's the best at early autumn exploration since he can boost his speed by 30% the moment he spawns in. So take advantage of your speed and start running around and gathering the basic resources. I would get at least 12 grass, 16 twigs, and 3 flint. The 12 grass is enough for me to craft a backpack, a hammer, and a torch. The 16 twigs is enough for 2 pickaxes, 1 torch, 1 hammer, 1 axe, a shovel, and a backpack. The 3 flint are for a pickaxe and an axe. After getting at least that many resources, you want to immediately search for the mosaic biome. The mosaic biome will most likely be near spawn, and has a lot of rocks, flint, and gold. So use more speedy balloons if you need to, in order to make your search go faster. If you happen to come across another biome that contains lots of minerals, just go there instead. Once you are there, you want to get at least 11 gold, 30 rocks, and 15 flint. The 11 gold will be for a science machine, an alchemy engine, a beefalo bell, and a saddle. Since Wes has such low stats and deals 25% less damage, it's unsurprising that the best option for him for combat is to use a beefalo. If you don't know how to tame a beefalo, then I'd recommend you watch my other video called How to Actually Tame a Beefalo. So once you've got these resources, it's time to find the beefalo. Beefalo typically appear in two areas of the map. One is a huge savanna biome, and the other is a small patch of savanna terrain in the middle of a forest. Other than the triple mac biome that doesn't always appear in every world, the beefalo savanna biome is the only biome full of savanna grass. You can tell the difference between the two because the triple mac biome will not only have mac tusks, but you have patches of rocky terrain and tall birds. The forest containing the beefalo will pretty much never be the same forest with a single mac tusk and the moonstone. So if you see any of those, then you know you're in the wrong biome. So explore using your speedy balloons until you find them. I would recommend picking flowers as needed as Wes. Wes already has really low sanity and each new balloon will cost you 5 points. Dealing with nightmare creatures without a science machine and using a character with a 25% nerf is just a big waste of time. In addition to picking flowers here and there, you should also be looking for pig houses or pig heads. You want to hammer every pig head you see and at least 3 pig houses. You also want to be picking twigs here and there as well as getting some grass. Finally, you should also chop down 2 fully grown trees in order to gain 6 logs and 4 pine cones. After finding the beefalo, you want to feed it 5 twigs carrots, berries, or either green or blue mushrooms in order to get the taming process started. Each twig or berry will tame it for 15 seconds. Each carrot or mushroom will tame it for 19. So if you feed them 5 of these, they'll be taming for over a minute before you have to feed them again. Use this minute to build a science machine, if you haven't already, and craft a backpack, a shovel, a beefalo bell, and pre-craft an alchemy engine. You also need to get 4 beefalo wool to make the saddle. You can do this by shaving the beef while they are sleeping or killing them. In most situations, I would recommend shaving them since Wes is bad at combat and kiting them would take more time. So bind the beefalo that has started taming with the beefalo bell, hammer your science machine to get back the gold and other resources, and feed your beefalo until nighttime. Come back to the beefalo before nighttime so you can shave two of them to obtain the four beefalo wool that you need for the saddle. Make sure you do not shave your own beefalo since a shaved beefalo bucks you off so often that there's no point in riding it until its fur comes back. Now that you've got the beefalo wool, you have all the ingredients for the saddle. I wouldn't saddle it immediately though. A beefalo at 0% domestication will buck you off every 15 seconds, which gets annoying. Instead, I will tame it by ensuring that its hunger is above zero for the first day or a day and a half. Since you don't have to be on your beefalo during this time, I will do things like dig up saplings and hammer more pig houses. I might also go into the caves and get at least two light bulbs. I would also search for a good base location so I don't have to build another alchemy engine. I typically like to base near the dragonfly desert because beefalo allow you to pick cactus and spiky bushes without any consequences and the tumbleweeds give you lots of twigs and grass for free. So after you've found a good base spot, plop down your alchemy engine and craft a saddle, a lantern, and the football helmet. With these three items, you're now basically super Wes. Beefalo completely replaces Wes's speedy balloons as they cost no sanity and boost his speed by 63% instead of the balloon's maximum of 30. Since the beefalo blocks 100% of virtually all damage, Wes's low health becomes irrelevant as long as you don't get your beefalo killed. Beefalo deal 34 damage per hit and can attack an infinite amount of times. Since Wes deals 25% less damage, a beefalo effectively gives him a slightly stronger battle spear with infinite durability. The football helmet protects Wes from rare damage sources like projectiles, 
and will protect him if he gets bucked off of the beefalo at a bad time. The lantern is an upgraded version of the torch, as it provides a much larger light radius, lasts over 6 times as long, can be dropped, and is easily refueled using abundant light bulbs. So now that you've got these things, it's time to explore the map. So feed your beefalo 5 times, plop the saddle on him, and start exploring. If you've been keeping your beefalo's hunger above zero until this point, then it'll take your beefalo at least 30 seconds before it bucks you off. Since we're aiming to be an S tier West, we're specifically trying to find the three suspicious marbles and the shadow chest piece. You also want to pick up the pan flute and the terrarium when you see both and bring them back to base. Depending on your luck, you might find all of these really quickly. If you're unlucky, you might have to explore the entire map before you find all of them. I would also leave exploring the swamp and killer bee biomes for last, since this gives your beefalo more time to tame and increase its buck timer. Also, try and find Chester and keep it with you because once you find the suspicious marble and the chest set piece, you'll have to drop your backpack in order to transport the pieces. With Chester, you can just put all your backpack items into him and transport the pieces. Also, make sure that you keep your beefalo bell in your personal inventory and not in your backpack. If you leave the beefalo bell in your backpack, your beefalo will run all the way back to your pack once you dismount it, which can be very devastating for so many reasons. Along the way, you want to pick grass and twigs so that you have a decent supply for your beefalo. You also want to make sure that you have a decent food supply. I like to use a combination of cooked cactus and cooked monster meat or raw meat. The cactus cancels the negative effects of cooked monster meat and raw meat, so you end up getting to fill a ton of hunger while on the move. Since we aren't just trying to rush bosses, but also trying to make a decent base, I'll be making 4 crockpots, a birdcage, and a refrigerator that I'll pretty much never use. I'll also be digging up spiky bushes and grass and replanting them at base. The spiky bushes will come in handy, the grass tufts I don't think I end up using that much. I'll also set up 3 pig houses just for some meat and to help a little with the shadow chest piece fight. Eventually you'll have a decent looking base and all the chest pieces assembled. The next thing that we want to do is rush the ruins. Before we go to the ruins I'd craft a gold pickaxe, grab a bunch of cactus, have a few logs for campfires, and get living logs. So if you've come across any totally normal trees, chop them. If not, then we have to go to the Lunar Grotto and kill some mush gnomes first. So after entering the caves, either locate the Lunar Grotto, which is always near the Blue Mushry Forest, and kill some mush gnomes. Or, if you already have the living logs, try to find the ruins while picking light bulbs and carrots along the way. Opening up two cave entrances typically makes finding the ruins easier since you can triangulate its location based on the fact that the cave entrances are typically located at the edges of the map, opposite the ruins. So from the cave entrance, make your way to the muddy biome, and then find the wilds. I would pick a bunch of lichen, since they are really abundant, and provide good hunger for you and your beefalo. Since you've already spent a bunch of time building your base, exploring the map, and putting together the shadow chest pieces, you're probably around 10 days into taming your beefalo at this point. This is good because after taming your beefalo for 10 days, it should allow you to ride it for about 2 minutes or a quarter of an entire game day before bucking you off. This allows you to run straight through the ruins, even if it's full on nightmare phase. While normal characters would just wait out the nightmare cycle, or would be very wary of areas infested with nightmares and monkeys, you can just run straight through all these dangers, because you're way faster than all of them. So not only can monkeys and nightmare creatures not catch you, but you can outrun them until they are off screen, which effectively de aggros them. To be safe though, I would feed my beefalo a bunch of lichen before running through during nightmare phase. And if I'm exploring the wilds in order to find the ruins, I try and locate safe areas where there are no threats, so I can go there to make distance in order to reset my beefalo's buck timer. After exploring the wilds, you'll eventually find the ruins. Our goal is to defeat the ancient guardian, craft a bunch of ruins loot, and get out. So we'll try to find the labyrinth while mining statues along the way. Since all ruins gear requires nightmare fuel, it will also help if you fought nightmare creatures during nightmare phase if there aren't too many of them around. If you need more nightmare fuel, Wes can easily drop his sanity by crafting balloons. So I'd craft a bunch of party balloons and keep on fighting nightmares until you have enough fuel. It also helps if you've acquired some fuel by fighting nightmare creatures while you were exploring the map. Be aware of clockwork bishops and rooks. The bishops fire projectiles which hit the player directly, so the beefalo will not be able to protect you from that damage. This is why you should be wearing a football helmet or something better at all times. The rook is dangerous because his charge will hit anything in front of him, even if he's not targeting you. And his charge deals 200 damage to your beefalo if you're not riding it. So if your beefalo gets hit by a rook while you are off of it, it's pretty much dead since your beefalo will now start attacking the rook which will not only kill your beefalo in 5 hits, but it'll also aggro all these surrounding clockworks onto your beef as well. While your beefalo is attacking the rook, it won't allow you to mount until the rook is dead, so there's no way to save it. Well, actually there is, but it's a little cheap. If your beefalo is aggroed onto the rook, you need to put a little distance between yourself and the rook and exit the game. When you rejoin, your beefalo will no longer be fighting the rook, and it'll come back to you and allow you to ride it again. Eventually, you'll come across the labyrinth. 
You could spend time searching all the chests, but since the Ancient Guardian's loot was buffed, I wouldn't go out of my way to loot all of them. Instead, I'd open the ones that I happened to stumble upon while I tried to find the Ruins boss. After I find him, I would make a campfire and cook a bunch of cactus. The Ancient Guardian has 10,000 HP. Wes is only dealing 34 damage per hit, and his Shadow Tentacles have Insanity Auras, so I don't want to worry about starving or fighting Nightmare Creatures while I'm fighting him. So make sure your Hunger and Sanity are good, give your Beefalo a good feeding, and start the fight. The AG will charge at you in a straight line after a wind up. Since the beefalo has super speed, dodging this is really easy. Lead him into pillars or the rubble that falls from the ceiling in order to stun him. The longer he charges before ramming into something, the longer he will be stunned. When you need to dismount your beefalo, get him stunned and run away from the area and put one of the pillars in between him and you. You don't want to dismount in the arena because as the fight progresses, He'll eventually spawn shadow tentacles and dismounting on top of one of these can be a run ender. The fight is pretty straightforward, just repeat this until the AG is dead. If for some reason your beefalo gets damaged to the point where the bottom of the screen is red, just run away from the fight, feed your beefalo a couple of blue mushrooms, and come back. If you don't have any healing food, just run away and explore the ruins for a day or two and come back. Your beefalo heals over 300 HP per day while the Ancient Guardian doesn't heal and won't be going anywhere. Run around the large ornate chest in order to ensure that there are no shadow tentacles, and then take all the loot. Since the Ancient Guardian's loot got buffed, you probably have enough material to craft a ton of ruins gear. So either find the completed pseudoscience station, kill the bishops, and craft your gear, or upgrade a broken one. If you have green gems, you want to craft a construction amulet before crafting any of the staffs or armor. You want to craft at least one star color staff because they will make winter really easy and then craft a bunch of other stuff just for show since Wes won't be using any of that stuff during this run. Grab all of it and head back to your base. You want to get out of the caves before the start of winter so that you won't die of freezing. After getting back to your base, drop all of your ruins loot because you're not going to be using any of it except for the star color staff. Put a star in a safe spot and craft a thermal stone and you are ready for winter. If you're like me and based by dragonfly, you can drop your thermal stones right next to lava ponds, since the lava will heat your stones to their absolute maximum. So far, we've explored the map, created a decent base, assembled the chess pieces, defeated the ancient guardian, and rushed the ruins. Now it's time to earn S tier status. The first raid boss that we'll fight are the shadow chess pieces. Unfortunately, the beefalo isn't going to be fully tamed, so we are going to have to get off of it at least one time during the fight. In order to keep its obedience high throughout the fight, I'll max out its hunger using steamed twigs, since your beefalo's obedience drains much slower when it's not starving. I would also bring cooked cactus flesh into the fight, because without it, there's a good chance that Wes will go insane towards the end, and you don't want to have to deal with nightmare creatures on top of the boss. The shadow chess pieces boss can only be summoned on a new moon. Unless you've messed with the lunar cycle as wicker bottom, the second new moon will always be on day 21. After that, the next one will be on day 41, so you pretty much have to fight them on day 21 as Wes. To summon them the first time, you usually mine one of the suspicious marble statues after you've assembled all three of them. However, in this run, I had all the pieces assembled by day 11, and it was near the set piece, so I mined them on a full moon. Mining them on a full moon will produce the normal versions of the clockwork chess pieces, and will drop the figure sketches for the respective chess piece. If you take the figure sketches of these pieces, and insert them into a potter's wheel, you can build your own chess pieces out of stone, and a few other minerals. So I built the figures at my base, made sure I was prepared with cooked cactus and a fully fed beefalo, and then hammered one of the figure sketches during the night of day 21. The chess pieces have three phases. Once you defeat a chess piece, the remaining pieces will level up. So in phase one, you're fighting all three pieces at their level one forms. In phase two, you're fighting two pieces in their level two forms. And in the final phase, you're fighting a single piece at level three. As each piece levels up, their HP, attack speed, damage, range, and movement speed all get a massive boost. However, the behavior of each piece generally remains the same. The knight will run at you and ram you, then run away and sometimes screech. The bishop will float around slowly towards you and turn into a ball of shadow bats that deals rapid area of effect damage over a few seconds. The rook attacks similar to the bishop, except it moves and attacks faster, and instead of a rapid attack, it teleports dealing a single hard hitting area of effect attack. This fight is a lot easier with teammates. If you're doing this solo, I'd recommend killing the pieces in the usual order which is Knight, Bishop, and then Rook. The first phase shouldn't be too difficult since each piece only has about 900 HP and their attacks don't deal too much damage and you can easily avoid them. In this phase, your beefalo is more than fast enough to dodge all three pieces. You definitely want to go after the Knight first because it's way too hard to deal with in its level 2 and especially level 3 phase. I wouldn't try to outright kite it. Instead, I'd tank its hits to deal as much damage to it as possible. Remember that since you are riding an untamed beefalo, you can't let this fight drag on for long, because you eventually have to feed your beefalo to let it mount, which isn't something you want to do when you have bosses breathing down your neck. When you beat the knight, you want to make sure that both the rook and the bishop are near it so that they both level up. 
if the other chess pieces are too far away when the knight dies. It's possible for them to not go to level 2. The second phase is the trickiest one if you're doing this fight solo. You can easily avoid the rook's attack, but even with the beefalo's speed, the bishop will get one hit in whenever it teleports. Since you have two pieces attacking you, you won't have a straightforward opportunity to get off of your beefalo in order to reset its buck timer. Since your beefalo isn't fully tamed at this point, it's only going to be dealing 34 damage per hit, so draining the bishop's 2500 HP while dodging the rook might take a while. To make this really easy, what I do is befriend a bunch of pigmen before the fight. The pigmen will distract the chess pieces which allow you to focus fire on the bishop and reset your beefalo's buck timer without any issues. The bishop and the rook might have gotten way stronger than before, but their general behavior remains the same. So dodge the rook when you see it teleport, attack the bishop during its downtime, and run away when you see it begin to turn into bats until the bishop goes down. After you beat the bishop, the rook will level up to 3. At level 3, the rook has 10,000 HP, moves, teleports, and attacks way faster than before, and he hits like a truck. Each hit from the rook will deal 165 damage, meaning he hits way harder than even the Twins of Terror. Since the rook has grown so large and attacks so quickly, it's very hard to dodge him as a normal character. Typically, you'd need to both have the 25% speed boost of the Walking King and the 30% speed boost of a Roller Cobblestone in order to outright dodge the rook. Luckily, you have something even faster, a Beefalo. With the Beefalo super speed, Wes can outright dodge all the rook's attacks, even if you haven't gotten lucky enough to obtain the Walking King or don't have access to a road. So with a Beefalo, phase 3 is pretty straightforward. Just attack the rook over and over again and dodge whenever he teleports. Instead of dodging by running away, I would center him on the star and dodge towards him so that you can benefit from the heat and slight sanity increase of the star. Since you're only dealing 34 damage per hit and the rook has 10,000 HP, you'll probably have to reset the buck timer at least once during this phase. Eventually the rook is dead and you've beaten your first raid boss as Wes. After this, I would go spend the next day or two prepping for the rest of the fights. So I would go into the caves and collect a stack of blue mushrooms for healing, pick a bunch of cactus for sanity, set up the walls for dragonfly, get the deer antler for claws, and if you haven't done so already, get the terrarium. If you've started taming your beefalo on day 2, and you've used it to kill both the ancient guardian and the shadow chess pieces, your beefalo should fully tame as an ornery beefalo sometime during day 23. At this point, you're ready to take on Dragonfly, Kloss, and the Twins of Terror. I would fight the Dragonfly first because it's possible for Kloss's loot stash to not spawn until day 26, and you want to summon the Twins of Terror on the longest winter nights in order to do the fights as fast as possible. With its 27,500 HP, the Dragonfly is easily the tankiest of all the bosses we'll fight in this run. She deals 75 damage per hit and has the same attack speed as the Deerclops. The Dragonfly is much harder to kite than the Deerclops, since if you're too far away from it when it begins to initiate its attack, it will fly at you while attacking. If it does this, then you're going to get hit, even if you're flying around on a beefalo, so you need to wait until the last second before trying to dodge the Dragonfly's swipe. When I'm fighting on foot, I'll typically try to get 6 hits in on the Dragonfly before dodging. With a beefalo, I'd also go with 6 hits, then dodge, unless you're using attack animation cancelling, then you should shoot for 7 or 8 hits. After its HP drops to 22,000, it'll run away to spawn lava at the lava pools around the arena. Each lava has 500 HP, deals 50 damage per hit, will burn Wes even if he's on a beefalo if he's standing too near them, and explode into fire which also bypasses the beefalo armor. You don't want to deal with these guys and dragonfly at the same time. So before the fight, you want to make stone walls corner to corner that connects to the lava pool that is the furthest away from the center. Use 12 stone walls on each side, and you shouldn't have to worry about the lava attacking you, even if you're standing on the outside of the wall near the lava pond. The lava's pathing directs them around your walls, but they won't behave the same when it comes to lava ponds, so they'll spend the rest of their short lives getting blocked by lava. Normally when you fight Dragonfly, you just stand outside the stone walls near the lava and let the Dragonfly come back to you after it's done spawning lava. However, since you've got the super speed, you want to instead chase the Dragonfly and continue attacking it until it spawned 3 or 4 lava. Since you're way faster than the minions, you can avoid them while getting some free hits in. After that, just run back outside the stone walls and hug the lava pond so that the lava is pathing directs them there. Once she is done spawning her babies, the Dragonfly will come back to you and start attacking again. The first hit she does is unavoidable, but after that, it's the same kiting pattern with 6 hits and then dodge, or 7 plus hits and then dodge if you're using animation cancelling. Her lava will just die off after a while, so one by one they will explode into a fiery mess. After the last lava dies, the Dragonfly will become enraged. It's important that when she enrages, she's not near your stone walls, because immediately after enraging, the first attack she will attempt to do is a triple stomp area of effect attack. You don't want to get caught in this, because it deals massive damage to your beefalo, and you don't want it to hit your walls, because it'll destroy structures. So when you see her becoming enraged, use the pan flute immediately before she stomps, or let her stomp and use that moment of clarity to use the pan flute. While the dragonfly is in her enraged state, she deals double the damage, attacks more frequently, and deals fire damage that bypasses the beefalo shield if Wes is too close. So if you're like me and don't feel like dealing with all that nonsense, use the pan flute. It'll put her to sleep and take her out of her enraged state. Once she's back to normal, hit her two or three times. 
dodge and then kite her like normal until she goes to spawn lava again. That's pretty much how to fight the dragonfly as Wes. The fight might take longer than with a normal character, since Hambat still outdamage the fully tamed ornery beefalo's 50 damage per hit, but you end up using less resources overall. You should have cooked cactus flesh on you so that you can restore your hunger and sanity throughout the fight, and feed your beefalo some blue mushrooms for healing as needed. Dragonfly deals 75 damage per hit. The beefalo's passive regeneration gives 7 HP every 10 seconds, which means it'll take about a minute and a half to recover a single dragonfly slap. Each blue mushroom restores 80 HP. If your beefalo ever goes into the red, which tells you that it has less than 2 HP, you can bring it back to full health with 10 blue mushrooms. So feed your beefalo blue mushrooms as needed. Also keep an eye on your own health as well, since the lava pools, exploding lava, and even dragonfly herself are capable of directly damaging Wes with burn and overheating damage. So use blue mushrooms as needed to stay alive, and cook cactus to stay safe. Other than that, you just repeat all of what we just talked about until the dragonfly is no more. With the dragonfly slain, that makes two raid bosses beaten, just two more to go. I would fight Kloss next, since the Twins of Terror can only be fought at night, and the longest nights of winter are days 27 to 31. To fight Kloss, you need to both locate the loot stash and obtain a deer antler from no Eye Deer. Both spawn in either the Mosaic Biome or Birchnut Biomes. The no Eye Deer only grow antlers after winter starts, and you'll have to attack them in order to make them ram into a tree in order to obtain the antler. Once you've got the antler and found the loot stash, try to open it with the antler and the Kloss fight will begin. Kloss has two phases which are mostly the same. In the first phase, Klaus has 10,000 HP and will spawn in with his two gem deer, one with a red gem and the other with a blue. The red gem deer will cast a spell that will create a circle of incineration. This will cause you to overheat and will also light you on fire if you stand in it for more than a moment. The overheating will deal damage directly to Wes for a few seconds. However, Wes will take damage much longer than that if he's wearing insulated clothing, so it's important to use just a thermal stone to regulate your temperature during this fight. Obviously, if Wes is set on fire, this will deal direct damage to him very quickly. The blue gem there will cast an ice spell that will slow you down initially, then freeze you after the spell is complete. Since you should be using a heated thermal stone, you shouldn't take any damage from the spell unless it completely freezes you. If that happens, then the freezing damage directly hits Wes. Because both gem deer, especially the red one, are capable of dealing damage to Wes, it's even more important than the dragonfly fight to bring cooked cactus and blue mushrooms. Use the blue mushrooms when you see your health start to get concerning and use the cactus to keep yourself sane. As for Klaus, he'll perform these double swipe attacks that deal 37.5 damage each. While he's walking at you, you want to get near him and bait out this attack. Then go in to deal a few hits, and then run away quickly as he tries another swipe. After this, wait a few seconds, and then he'll command his deer to cast a spell. If it's the fire spell, you want to continue attacking him until the spell is complete, at which point you run in the opposite direction of Klaus, then let him walk to you and bait out his attack again. If it's the ice spell, you want to immediately run around Klaus to the other side of him and attack him until the spell casting is complete, then bait out his swipes again. Whenever you attack Klaus, you want to make sure that you're not near either of his gem deer, because they'll hit you for 50 damage each, and they attack pretty quickly too. So center yourself in between both deer and attack Klaus repeatedly in the way I mentioned before. Your first instinct might be to kill the gem deer, but you really don't want to do this. If one of his gem deer dies, Klaus will become enraged, and in this state his health will almost triple, he'll gain 66% reduced damage, he'll attack way faster, and he'll hit about 6 times harder. If you've never fought in Rage Claws, believe me when I say that you don't want to have to deal with that. If for some reason one of his gem deer is killed, just run away from the fight and use another antler to spawn him in again. So just learn how to fight around his deer, because it's much better than the alternative. When his health drops to half, he'll summon a couple of Krampuses. You can use the pan flute to put them to sleep so you can fight them one by one, or you can group them together to make them attack at the same time. Either way, you want to attack them once, then dodge, then once again, then dodge. Repeat until they are dead. Once they are finished, just fight Klaus the same way as he did until his health reaches zero. If you need to heal your beefalo, run away until Klaus starts to walk back to his loot stash and give them a few blue mushrooms. Klaus will slowly heal while at his loot stash, and if you run too far, he'll despawn. So don't go too far and make it quick. After Klaus is initially defeated, he'll get revived by the life-giving amulet he was wearing and enter phase two. In this phase, he'll do the same thing as he did in phase one except he will do this scream and pounce attack followed by two swipes. Usually, it will be hard to dodge this attack when fighting without super speed, however with the beefalo, dodging this attack is a joke. So dodge his pounce, bait out the double swipe attack, and then attack again. When he casts his spell, do the same thing as in phase 1. In this second phase, he has an insanity aura of minus 100 per minute, so just use some of the cooked cactus to manage your sanity. Other than that, it's really similar to phase 1, and he only has 5000 HP this time. Your beefalo doesn't deal as much damage as a normal character, but with its super speed, you can attack Klaus more times before having to dodge, so you can beat him just as fast or even faster than the normal way. 
and you'll most likely use less resources. After Klaus falls in battle, just wait for his gem deer to turn into regular deer and loot his loot stash for goodies. You've now beaten three raid bosses, just one more to go. The Twins of Terror will be the last raid boss that we fight before day 30. These guys hit really hard, and in their second phase, the green one can hit you in rapid succession. Therefore, you want to make sure that your beefalo is at full HP before going into each fight. You also want to seriously run away from the fight whenever your beefalo goes into the red. If your beefalo is in the red, it has less than 200 HP, meaning it'll die in 2 hits or less from either twin. Getting a fully tamed beefalo killed is one of the most depressing things that can happen to you in this game, so don't take chances with these guys. Just run away and heal. So all those blue mushrooms that you've picked are really just insurance for the Twins of Terror fight in case you mess up. The Twins of Terror is a 2 vs 1 fight. There is a red twin and a green twin. Both look and act very similarly, except the red will spawn more minions called Suspicious Peepers, while the green one has a faster dash that it will use more often. Each twin has 10,000 HP and hits really hard, dealing 125 damage per hit. The Suspicious Peepers that they spawn have 200 HP and deal 20 damage. Fighting both of the twins at the same time is harder than fighting them separately. So at the beginning of the fight, you want to use the pan flute to put both of them to sleep, and then start attacking the green one. Since the green one will dash more often than the red, you want to position yourself so that each time the green one tries to hit you with a dash, it takes the fight away from the red one. Once the twins are separated enough, then it's really a 1 vs 1 fight. The green one will dash at you in a straight line, so once you see it wind up for the dash, run directly away from it, and once it starts to actually dash, book it in a 90 degree angle. Since your beeflow has super speed, dodging either twin in phase 1 shouldn't be difficult. When the total damage done to both twins combined is greater than 7000, both twins will enter phase 2. In phase 2 their appearance will change, gaining a giant metal mouth, but more importantly instead of attacking with a dash, they'll now dash at you 3-5 to five times in rapid succession. This is the move that you really need to watch out for, especially if you're fighting the green one for the first time. Each dash deals 125 damage. If you really mess up and get comboed 5 times, that's 625 damage, enough to kill your beefalo, even if it had the majority of its health up until that point. When the twins start phase 2 dashing, you want to dodge it the same way. Run directly away from it when it's winding up for the dash, and immediately run at a 90 degree angle. Because you're going to need a lot of room to run, make sure that you fight the twins in an open area. Things like spider dens, trees, or boulders can block your movement just enough to let you get hit. Beefalo can make this fight a lot easier than using a normal character for two reasons. One is their super speed makes dodging the twins attack way easier, and allows you to get back to attacking them faster. The second is that you can hold a lantern, and use a miner's hat or even moggles while maintaining super speed, while all the other characters outside of WX and Warly will be limited to the small light radius of the Magiluminescence, unless they've went out of their way to prepare a bunch of glowberries ahead of time. The twins only appear at night, so during the day you want to take the time to get more blue mushrooms as needed from the blue mushroom forest, and kill all the suspicious peepers that were spawned in. You also want to make sure that once you start the twins fight, you activate the terrarium every night until both twins are dead. If you fail to activate the terrarium consecutively, you'll need to wait another 20 days until you can fight the twins again. Since you're fighting the green one first, it won't have much HP left once it enters phase 2, so hopefully you can kill it quickly. The red one will be in phase 2 and at full health when you first start fighting it. However, if you were able to deal with the green one's dash attack, then dealing with the red one's dashes should be easy for you. It will summon a lot of minions, so try to lead it away from all of them. If you aren't able to do this, you can use the pan flute to put everything to sleep, and thin out the herd before engaging the red one again. After doing that again and again, eventually you'll kill the red twin as well, which means you've beaten your 4th raid boss before mid game. And that's pretty much how to be what in my opinion qualifies as an S tier west. You've built a decent base, explored the entire map, rushed the ruins, beat the ancient guardian, beat the shadow chest pieces, completely tamed an ornery beefalo, beat the dragonfly, claws, and the twins of terror all before mid game. I think the best part about clearing the bosses this way is just how little resources you end up using to do it. Throughout the entire run, I think the only armor I use is one or two football helmets. I don't even use any weapons, and the only healing that I use is a bunch of blue mushrooms. I'm sure there are ways to beat even more raid bosses as Wes by mid game, or add stuff to this run like rushing Lunar Island, but this is one of the ways to do it that is very consistent, doesn't require good RNG, is really resource cheap, and most important of all, was done pretty casually. So if you're playing solo, you now know how to comfortably and consistently rush the ruins and beat 4 raid bosses before mid game using the weakest character in the game. Anyways that's all, like always, thanks for watching, take care and have a great day.